Welcome back. You're watching the number one home improvement YouTube channel in the entire world. Today, I have to turn this piece of engineered stone into window sills, custom cut window sills. It shouldn't be too challenging. At least I've got it all mapped out up here of how it should go. Uh, but if you've done this type of work, you know that nothing ever goes that way. So step one is we're going to the house and we're going to get our measurements and then we're coming back here and we're going to do all our cuts here in the workshop. Here's what I was writing down on that piece of paper. These are all the measurements and a little diagram of where all the cuts go. Probably wondering how I'm going to cut all this. There's lots of ways to do it. You could do this entire thing on an angle grinder. I'm going to be using my large bridge saw and I'm going to make a jig that goes in it. So one of these has to be 39 and a half and one is 31 and a half. But our width is only four and a half and this is six. So I need to basically rip this down. I'm gonna cut it into my, my lengths first so it's a shorter length to work with. So to make my cross cut, I'm going to use a tiny little circular saw for masonry. This has a masonry blade right in it. And I've got another one that actually hooks up to water. And like you hook a, a garden hose up to it and I've got a little valve and everything and it squirts out water. You would think that an electric saw that plugs into the wall should not have water squirting out of it, but it does. And I would use that for a much longer cut. Uh, but since I'm only cutting six inches, I'm just gonna deal with the dust and not the mess. So don't get too worried about your cut. Do worry about the corner chipping off on the front edge. So that's why I'm cutting from the front edge. Uh, if the back edge chips off, it's not a big deal because remember I've got to notch this whole thing out. So this is all going to get removed and then I'm going to polish this edge and match the bevel. So I think this is going to work. This is my simple jig that I'm going to clamp onto the, uh, what's my call it there? The saw. Well, things are going going quite smoothly. 
Remember, there is a, a layer of protective plastic on top of here. Uh, you're never going to see this seam here. It's all going to get caulked in, but it does put a really nice cut on there. Came out good. Now the next step here is for me to notch these out. I'm going to draw on here, and even though it's got that plastic cover on there, I'm going to tape up both ends so that I can draw on the tape. Always double checking these things. Don't want to get this one measured mixed up with this one. I don't think I did. Four and a half and four and a half. So. Mm -hmm. Now what's the best way to cut these out? There's a lot of different ways to do it. I could use this saw right there. I could use that saw over there. That'll probably be the best saw to use. But it's over there. I don't want to get any anything wet anymore. I'm going to use that circular saw again. This going in the uh, suction. Well, the camera wasn't rolling, but what I did is just popped it right off. Just, I don't hit it this way. I kind of kick it in this way, and it just pops that corner right off. I'm not sure if it was rolling or not, but I went and cut it all. Well, actually, I know it wasn't rolling. Uh, hopefully, I got a few of these cuts on camera. can't remember when I hit it on and off. But these are all the, the pieces. And each corner popped off. And like I said, I'm going to clean that up, that inside corner, with an angle grinder. So normally, I would be using an angle grinder without a guard. So I'm trying to... Uh, <laughs> I don't know. I don't want to get yelled at in the comments. But this guard here, it's on my DeWalt cordless. It doesn't quite have the RPMs as a corded one does. But it'll work. Uh, it has an easily adjustable guard to move, to move it out of the way. But a lot of times when you're doing this type of work, the guard gets in the way. And that's why you don't see very many guards on angle grinders. At least not in the real world. You might on YouTube, but out there in the world, real world, this is the first thing that gets tossed. Another thing, uh, you don't need a wrench. Uh, you just hold the, the little stopper in and you just grab the blade and crank it on there. Uh, same thing to get it off. Get it on the stopper, you just grab the blade and it comes right off. Well, people don't know that. Surprising. Surprising. All right, what else are we gonna do for, for the safety police? Safety Sally's out there. Where's my, there it is. Put this thing on too. First thing I'm gonna focus on is trying not to break it, but I'm just gonna shave this corner out with the angle grinder. The thing rolling, it's still rolling, okay. That's what it looks on the back side there. Keep in mind you're not going to see this so I undercut it just a hair. On the top side there's still a little bit of a, a thingy there. So we'll get that dressed up, tuned up right now. I don't know man, I'm going to have to get... All right. I tried. I tried my best.
So the last part of this is to just polish these ends, which is, they're already pretty smooth, and put just a slight bevel on them. I'll give you a close up. So this is the factory bevel on the face. And I'm just gonna carry that tiny little bevel around the corner and then polish it. Polisher does hook up to the, to the garden hose. And I really don't feel like getting it all out and making a big mess, cause it's, it's a big mess. I have to wear like a raincoat and hip waders. So I'm gonna do it with just air, hooked up to my air compressor, uh, right like that. And I've got an assortment of polishing discs somewhere over here. They're rated in grits. Uh, I think it goes up to like 3,000 grits, but I'm gonna start rough at like 50. And even we got a buff. So there's 3,000 and a buff. A bucket of water right here that I can dip it in and, but like I said, this is one inch. So this is the product, the engineered stone. There's a lot of different brands. I got a great deal on this. I was actually walking through Lowe's and they had a box of it on the floor. It is not something they normally stock in these lengths. The longest you can get normally, I believe is only 36 inches. That could vary from store to store. Uh, but it's basically quartz, engineered stone. You know, it's uh, got rock dust in very easy to cut and you can use it for all sorts of different things uh window sills in kitchens is a great spot for it you can use it on bathroom showers so if you got made a shower pan instead of wrapping the curb in tile you can put one of these on the top of the curb the saw the little circular saw i think this is a four four and a half inch blade in there Little Makita, I've had this for probably close to a decade. This thing here, I, I really like using uh, when it's warmer out and I can be out in the backyard using it. Uh, you don't necessarily need this thing. You could use a polisher, a variable speed polisher that plugs into the wall will also work. My angle grinder, this one is Porter Cable. Well, if you've got questions about engineered stone, put them down below. You're probably wondering, well, when are you gonna finish the whole window? I will get to that in a separate video. I'll be putting something around the window and it'll get caulked in. Right now, that glue is curing and I don't wanna mess with it. I don't even wanna pull the plastic off until it's fully set up. And I definitely don't wanna put the trim on until it's all set up. Goodbye.